Now, while there are a lot of Mustang owners who simply want to cruise their cars, take them out on a Sunday and enjoy them, the majority of Mustang owners agree with Ricky Bobby and they want to go fast. Now, what does it take to go fast in a Mustang? Well, there's basically two ways with all things being equal to make your Mustang faster. You can either add more horsepower or you can shave some weight. Now, adding horsepower is always going to cost money. There's a couple little ways to do it, but if you want to add any kind of real power to your Mustang, you're going to spend some money to do so. Weight, there are actually a lot of ways you can save weight off your car. They're going to be very inexpensive, in many cases, even free. Now, the math goes, every 100 pounds of weight you shave is roughly a tenth and a quarter mile. Now, math isn't 100% accurate, but it's a great baseline. So again, if you want to go fast and don't want to spend a ton of money, sometimes making your car lighter is the way to go. So today we're going to discuss the two different kinds of weight on your Mustang and the best place to save weight to go fast. All right, so when it comes to weight on your Mustang, you've got two different versions. You've got your sprung weight and you have your unsprung weight. So which one's better to remove? Well, there's a lot more to it, so let's talk a little bit more about the different weights. We're gonna start with sprung weight. Now, sprung weight is weight supported by the suspension of your vehicle. So assume your suspension, we're gonna look at the coil spring. Pretend each of those coil springs is a scale. So anything that's gonna make the weight change on those springs is gonna be your sprung weight. You're talking about the entire body of the car, the glass, the interior, your engine, your transmission, all of that stuff is sprung weight, so there's a lot of weight to it. Now, where do you save weight on sprung weight? Well, anything you can move from the car is gonna save weight. If you're talking about road racing, drag racing, whatever, go to the pits, you'll see lots of cars with the back seat, the passenger seat, and the spare tire laying next to it when they go racing. That is sprung weight that's very, very easy to remove. Now, as you get more serious and want to spend a little bit of money, there's plenty of other places you can save weight there too. Lightweight fiberglass hoods, lightweight drag seats, an actual rear seat delete to get rid of the seat itself, lightweight batteries, lightweight engine components. There's tons of different ways to get rid of sprung weight. Now, when you get really, really serious with it, then you're talking carbon doors, carbon trunk lids, you can get rid of the dash, you can get rid of the door panels, console. I mean, it really depends how far you want to go. Your normal street car, lightweight hood, maybe some lightweight seats are good ways to get rid of some sprung weight. Racers, let your imagination go wild. Go to any track and look at the pits. You're going to see tons of cars that are completely gutted. So that's the best way to get weight out of the car. Now, again, once you remove that weight, obviously, then you want to change your suspension up. That's a whole other video. But as far as sprung weight goes, there's plenty of places to save it on your Mustang. Now, when you're removing sprung weight, keep in mind there's a lot of components you can replace or upgrade that are actually gonna increase performance and also make other things easier. For example, your tubular K-member. The tubular K-member is gonna weigh way less than the factory K-member. It gets weight off the front of the car. And best of all, it makes it easier to work on your car. You have more room under the hood. You have more room for stuff like headers. The same thing with fiberglass hoods. If you go with like a cowl induction hood, not only are you saving weight with the hood, but you're getting heat out of the engine bay. So again, when you're shopping for parts to save sprung weight, a lot of them will also have performance advantages. Now let's discuss unsprung weight. Now unsprung weight is just as described, it's weight not supported by the suspension. The biggest component is gonna be wheels and tires, but you're also talking about your braking system and in most cases the rear end of the car. Now when it comes to saving unsprung weight, the most common thing is gonna be lightweight wheels. Now, if you're talking drag racing, you know, you want the skinniest wheel you can get in the front for rolling resistance and weight, if you're talking about turning, you usually want a wider wheel and tire, but again, you're going to benefit from a lighter wheel because the car is going to perform better. But either way, wheels and tires are definitely the most common thing, but there also are lightweight brakes. Now again, if you're talking about turning, you want a larger brake system, but there are still ones that are way lighter than factory. If you're talking drag racing, there are extremely light brake systems out there that are just adequate enough for the track, but will get the job done and way, way less than factory components. So when it comes to shaving weight off your Mustang, where is the best place to start with your sprung weight or your unsprung weight? Well, the answer is honestly both because the place you want to start is anything that turns. Rotational mass is going to require additional energy for acceleration and deceleration. While a lot of your static mass is simply along for the ride, this has to actually be moved. So this is the best place to start. Now there's a couple different formulas, but on average, 10 pounds of rotational weight is equivalent to 100 pounds of static weight. So the things that move are the things you want to definitely go light with first. Your wheels and tires, your brakes, even engine pulleys, flywheels, lightweight clutches, lightweight drive shafts, and as you get more serious, even axles and carriers and stuff like that. 
rotational mass is the best place to start. If you look at a lot of race cars, that's where all the high-end components are going to be. You want to save anything that rotates because, again, that mass is way more beneficial than anything static. Now, if you want to go fast, shaving weight is definitely going to be part of the puzzle. Now, for your modern street car, you obviously may not want to give up a lot of the amenities these cars have, and you're going to deal with what you have for the most part, unless you're getting serious. But if you're building a car from the ground up and you want to build something even class specific, shaving weight is going to be a huge part of the build process. Now, a lot of race cars will have class limits, where they have to weigh a certain amount. But even on those cars, you want to get as much weight out of the car as possible so you can put that weight where you want it. Now, if you're talking about a car that's set up for a road course or autocross, most of those cars you want a 50-50 weight distribution between the front and back of the car. Drag racers usually want a little more weight to the rear end for traction. But either way, you want the ability to put that weight where it can go so that way you can get the most performance out of your chassis. Now, when it comes to weight savings, there's definitely one more thing to keep in mind, and that is the driver. You know, all of us can afford to lose a couple pounds, and that's one of the easiest and free ways to save weight on your Mustang.